You must believe in Jesus Christ before you are baptized. That is the message I have for you uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. And I pray that the Lord would anoint this word to your heart today. I pray that this would be a year of uh, extreme blessing for each and every one of you, young, old, doesn't matter. May the Lord bless you. May May he open up your understanding to the scriptures like never before. Let's go to Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority unto Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, and read Esaias, or Isaiah the prophet. So uh, let's just stop right there. So uh, we see uh, right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a unique uh, happening here, because the angel of the Lord is telling Philip uh, where to go. Okay, so it's not every day you have an angel tell you which direction to take. So uh, we see something's about to happen. He says, go south, uh, go from Jerusalem, go toward Gaza. Okay, so uh, it, it lets us know that there was a man of Ethiopia. He had a great authority and he was in charge of all the treasure of the queen of the Ethiopians. So this is interesting. And the scripture tells us that this man was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah. That's the prophet Isaiah. That's in the Old Testament, by the way. So this is very interesting because it shows us that the Lord knows what's going on. You know, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro across the earth, ladies and gentlemen. So Uh, The Lord is up to something here. I want you to see that this man, it says he came to Jerusalem for to worship. This was probably more than likely, you know, the Feast of uh, Pentecost, but uh, it doesn't go into great detail. So we see that this man, uh, most people believe he was uh, a Gentile and was a, a Jewish proselyte. Now he's on the way back after the uh, feast, so he's observing the feasts. So he came to Jerusalem to worship. Let's go to verse 29. It says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So uh, this is a divine appointment, ladies and gentlemen. I think you see that. This is a, uh, a setup from God. This is beautiful. And you know, folks, the Lord will do this with all of us. Uh, you as believers, you, you, you'll have divine appointments. All of a sudden, the Lord will put somebody in your path who's curious, uh, perhaps about things in, in the Bible. And, and the Lord knows that when people are searching for truth, and this is what took place here. So, you know, I've had Things like this happen to me, not not an angel telling me, but you see how people will be suddenly put before you, and that's the Lord setting things up uh, for you to give the gospel. So that's what took place. So now here, he's asking Philip that he would come and sit with him. So you picture him getting up in a chariot, and he was reading uh, the book of Isaiah, and Philip uh, asked him, he says, understand this, thou, what thou readest. Do you, do you understand what you are reading? Now, it, it makes it clear, ladies and gentlemen, that he heard him reading. So obviously this man was reading out loud. And as Philip got really close uh, to the chariot, he heard him. And that's when he went up and started talking to him. And uh, the man obviously invited him to sit with him. He wanted him, obviously, to expound upon the scriptures uh, to him. And it says here, verse 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb or silent before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment 
was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself, or of some other man? Philip asked him, you know, do you understand what, he, what you're reading? And the man was reading, uh, this is from the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that uh, Old Testament, this is a prophecy, ladies and gentlemen. That chapter, a prophecy that was written uh, approximately 700 years before the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross. So this is the passage that the man, the man of Ethiopia, that's what he's reading, and he wants to know, who, who, who is this speaking about? Is it the prophet speaking of himself, meaning Isaiah? Is he talking about himself? Or is he speaking of somebody else, another man? That's what he wants to know. So keep in mind that that scripture shows us that he wants to know who was it that was led as a sheep to the slaughter? Who was it that was as a lamb silent before her shearers? You know, the sheep, when they, when they take the uh, wool, you know, when they have to cut the wool off, that, that's what they do. So it, it's saying here that this is describing a person and, and who was silent just as a lamb when they're getting ready to cut that wool off that lamb. Who, who was it? whose life was taken from the earth. Who is this person? Who is this man uh, that is being described here? Is it, is, it, is it Isaiah or is it speaking of another man? So let me read now. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, passage from Isaiah 53. This is from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 to eight. I just want to show you how this works, ladies and gentlemen. It's beautiful when you see it. So, so keep in mind, we're reading in the book of Acts, and we're talking about a passage from Isaiah 53. I want to bring it to you right from Isaiah 53, just to show you, folks. I want to show you that there is a unity in the Bible, that the Old Testament flows perfectly into the New. So let me read the passage from Isaiah 53. This is a little different than what you see in the book of Acts. It says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is, is dumb or silent, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Wow. So that's powerful, folks. So obviously, we, we know who this is speaking about. Who was led as a sheep to the slaughter. This is describing what went on before Jesus Christ was killed upon the cross. It says that he was like a silent lamb, okay? Well, you know, if you remember when Christ was brought before uh, the judges and Pilate and, and everything that went on, uh, often you're going to find that Jesus remains silent, okay? A perfect description. And we know that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He, he died for our sins, ladies and gentlemen. You see? So here's a prophecy that was given approximately 700 years before it happened. And so this man in a chariot wants to know, who is this? What's going on here? Could you tell me? Could you help me out here? And look at, look at verse 35. It says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So before I uh, explain uh, what, what happened right there, folks? You know, this is pretty awesome. You know, as a new believer, and when I say new, I mean real new. You know, I remember walking into church one day, and there was a man 
that was wearing a young man had a football shirt on on the top it said Isaiah and then the number big big numbers it said 53 so it said Isaiah 53 and I asked the man I said hey what's that all about what does that mean and he and he said to me oh that's a prophecy about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and I didn't know this folks I said you got to be kidding me I, I didn't know it spoke about Christ in the Old Testament and let me tell you something from that day on folks I had a love for the scriptures and I start, started digging into the Word of God and finding prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, all pointing to the person of Jesus Christ. I want to throw that in there. So, you know, it, it, you know, here we have this uh, angel of the Lord telling Philip to go uh, uh, minister to this man. So here's this man wearing a, a football shirt. I mean, you talk about a divine appointment. If I was that man, I would have been thrilled because that's why he was wearing the shirt. You see? So here I came up inquiring, and he was able to help me. He was able to guide me. You see that? Uh, very awesome. A divine appointment, if you would, exactly what happened. So, you know, let's get back to the scriptures where the, where the man uh, wants to know. What, what, what hinders me from, there was a body of water. What, what hinders me? What stops me from being baptized right, right now, right here in, in this place? And look what Philip said. He said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So, folks, when Philip preached to him, you know, the man said, who's this speaking of? It says that Philip preached Jesus unto him. You can uh, rest assured that Philip went through the scriptures explaining to him the prophecy and how it was fulfilled at the cross of Jesus Christ. He probably went into great detail about who Jesus was and how all of this pointed to him and that a person could be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. So this is where the man came to the point and he says, what hinders me from being baptized? And, and it's important that you see that Philip told the man, if you believe with all your heart. So I want you to see, before Philip would give the okay for the man to be baptized, he wanted the man to know, look, you have to believe from your heart. And the man said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And, and trust me, he, he believed that he was the Messiah. He believed he was the Son of God. And he believed he was the only way. You can rest assured, before the man went down into the water, that is exactly what took place place. I like that. So what, what happened is, is and he, verse uh, 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they would come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and Passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Hallelujah. So they find a body of water, and both of them go down. You can picture this happening. They, they, they stroll into the water, and uh, Philip baptizes this man. He went into the water, I'm sure, you know, probably full immersion into this water. They come up out of the water, and the next thing you know, it says, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. If you look uh, up the, the Greek for that, caught away, it's the, it's the word harpazo, harpazo. It's the same word, you know, when you talk about the end times when the Lord comes back and, and the believers are caught up to be with the Lord and meet him in the air. The same word. Isn't that awesome, folks? So here, the Spirit of the Lord caught him away, probably just took off. Went, went up, and next thing you know, the, the, uh, the man the, uh, from Ethiopia didn't see him anymore. Isn't that cool? And, and he was found in another city. That, that city of uh, Azotus, by the way, uh, that was like 30 miles from, from Gaza where the man in a chariot was heading. So when the Lord wants to do something, he does it. Can you imagine what this man uh, was thinking as Philip was caught away? It says he was rejoicing. He went his way rejoicing. It was like a seal of approval that, that this miracle that took place, you know, here's Philip, you know, taken off, disappearing out of sight. And now this man is thrilled. You know, here he, he, he put his faith in the Lord. He got baptized. And, 
and now Philip's out of there. <laughs> that's too cool. So that that's it, folks. So what I want to show you, folks, is, you know, I, I say often, you know, I was baptized as an infant, as a Roman Catholic, folks. That doesn't save you. That doesn't make you a Christian. There's no spiritual rebirth that takes place uh, with infant baptism. And it's not limited to the Catholic Church, by the way. There are other denominations that uh, baptize infants. That's not how you become uh, part of the kingdom of God at all. This is it right here. This, is, this was ordained of God. You must be a believer. Uh, hey, listen to what Philip he says. If you believe with all your heart. And folks, you know, I, you know the, the baptism itself does not save you. Don't forget that. And that goes for adult baptism, by the way, too. It's your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that saves your soul. And I, but I do encourage you, you should get baptized. You should have a public testimony. Give glory to God. Let the angels rejoice with you when you go down into, in, into the water. You, you're making a public statement that you believe in Jesus Christ. You shouldn't put it off. Glory to God. I remember I was baptized as an adult. Oh, yes, I was. And what a day that was. A, a day of great joy. Hallelujah. You're making a statement. It's a public testimony, folks. And you should do it. But remember this, folks. It's not the water. The water doesn't wash away your sins. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, folks. Revelation 1 and 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. We were washed from our sins in his own blood. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Romans 5, 8 to 10. But God commended this love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Once again, we see before we learn that, that it was the blood that washes away our sins. And folks, it is the blood that justifies you as a believer, as a true believer, as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. It is the blood that justifies you before Almighty God, a holy God, and nothing else. Don't ever forget that. Baptism does not save you. Baptism does not justify you. Oh, don't ever forget that. We were enemies, folks, and we were reconciled back to God. How? by the death of his son. Hallelujah. So folks, I wanted to make this clear. I, I, I showed you how this man from Ethiopia, he was, he was studying the word of God. He wanted to know the truth. He was a seeker of God. He was seeking the truth, but it was the seed of the word of God when it entered into his heart that made the difference. First Peter 1 and 23 it says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Hallelujah. You're born again, folks. When that word of God, the incorruptible seed, gets inside your heart, you, you, you believe, you trust in the Lord, and then you say, okay, I'm going to be baptized. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it right there, folks. You be blessed and have a great day.